Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Lord's Prayer. It is a cold, but wonderful day that the Lord has made, and we will continue to rejoice and be glad in it. On Thursday, midnight, on the midnight class, it's about um, being free. I woke up with a song in my spirit and about being free. And this morning, I heard the Lord say, you know, many of us are in the baby stages of the walk that we're in. Many of us are still elementary. Many of us are still in daycare for the spirit realm. You know, God has called us to be high, to go higher and higher in him. But many of us have remained in spiritual daycare for way too long. And he said, right now is the time that my people need to go higher. They need to seek me more. They need, they need to be prepared for the time that is coming. They can no longer sit in this daycare and let others feed them, clean them, and wipe them. Okay? So the the scripture that he gave me was Hebrews 6, verse 1 and 2. And it says, Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Now, what does that mean? Now, think about it. Spiritual infancy is lack of growth, after the new birth. So the new birth is when you come to Christ. So, you know, when they give the altar call and you go up and you dedicate your life to Christ, that's your new birth because you're now entering into the, the, the kingdom. Of, the, you're not entering into the walk of salvation, right? So you're brand new. You don't know much. You don't know anything. So you begin to read the Bible, you begin to pray here and there, you begin to seek God and just begin to learn more about who it is that you're now serving, right? The spiritual infant is is concerned with self rather than service. And it's true, especially when you're brand new, you're more concerned with, okay, so how does this work? For, like, what am I going to do? You know, who am I in this brand new walk that I've signed up for, you know, that the Lord has called me to? How can I be fed? You know, because you don't know, so you need to be fed in order for you to go forth. It's just like a child. You feed the child, the child grows. He begins to learn, he or she begins to learn how to feed themselves. They begin to learn how to walk themselves. They begin to learn how to put on their clothes themselves, take baths for themselves, things of that nature. But if no one shows them initially or feeds them this, they don't know what to do going forward. They would remain infant even as their age may begin to grow, right? The spiritual infant is concerned with argument rather than action. The spiritual infant looks to people rather than to the master. So that's when you're always, I want a word, or you're always seeking the opinion of others, you know, instead of going to God and saying, okay, God, this is the situation that is before me. You know, how do you want me to handle it? I need to hear from you. Help me to hear from you. You know, a lot of us don't necessarily do that. A lot of us are still in these infantile stages and the Lord is saying, 
Now is the time. I need you guys to go up. Come out of the daycare, go into elementary school. Come out of the elementary school, that's where you are, and go into the middle school. It's time for you to go up. He doesn't want us to abandon it, but he wants us to leave it so that we can progress beyond these the, the, day, the daycare stages. You know, we know the elementary principles. We know repentance. We know faith. We know about baptism and laying on of the hands. It talks about it in the scripture. We know the resurrection and eternal joy. We know and we understand all of these basic principles. But how are we going to dig deeper? How are we going to go deeper in Christ? Excuse me. Excuse me. Christ taught on these basic teachers. You know, and in reading your Bible, you read, you develop, you learn from it. You know, you go to church, hopefully a Bible-based church, and they teach you about these things. They teach you about the doctrines. They teach you about faith and repentance, and they teach you about the laying on of hands and these different things. And um, um, what's the other one? About resurrection and eternal judgment. They teach you about these things. So how do we mature? He wants us to grow. He said to let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity. Right? So have you have you begun to develop yourself for service? How do you prepare? That's another thing. All week I've been thinking about preparing. And I don't know why until today. We have to begin to prepare. Because it's not us that graduate, right? So, like, when you go to school, you don't decide, okay, it's time for me to graduate. Absolutely not. Your teacher has given you tests, has given you quizzes, has given you assignments, and you begin to pass them, and you get a grade that has an A or B, whatever the passing grade is, you pass. And they think it's time for you to graduate and go on to the next school. So now you go from daycare because you can, you know, play with children and socialize and whatever it is. Now you've gone on to elementary. Now you can write your name and you, you know, you can clean up after yourself and whatever the steps are. So now you're going to middle school. You know, you're passing math, you're getting math, you're getting social studies, you're getting all of these things and you go on to high school, that's because you you develop and the teachers prepare you to go to the next level, right? How do you prepare for the kingdom of God? Are you reading your word? Are you asking God to help you to write me the word so that you can understand it, asking for revelation for the word of God? so you can rightly understand it, so that when it's time to give it, whether in teaching and preaching in exhortation and um, what's that thing called? Evangelism. However it is it's meant to be used, are you asking for revelation on his word? Are you praying and seeking him? consistently, remaining steadfast in prayer. Are you doing that? Are you beginning to worship him and understanding what worship is and how effective worship is in the things of God? Or are you just coming to church, do a little dance, you do a little shout, give a little wave, Look at the people, get the word, 
go home. Week goes by. Go back to church. Do it again. Do a little shout. Give a little away. Blow kisses. Get the word. Go home. Is it is it just that behavior, or are you asking, okay, how can I serve my church? How can I serve my community? How can I serve in my marketplace? How can I serve others? You know, now that you're, you begin to grow, it's like it's no longer about me. It's about how can I help others know about this God that I serve? How can I help get the world out? How can I spread his goodness? How, how can I help? Right? Those are the things to help mature in this time and in this season. You grow in grace. You grow. God will help you to get to the next level. He will see. It's like, you know, somebody once told me, someone once prophesied to me, says, it's not in vain. Because at one point in time, I was, like, concentrating and, and doing so many things for the church. But I'm not the type of person to be like, hey, look at me, look what I'm doing. I'm not the me fine singer, okay? And the person came up to me and was just like, it is not in vain of what you are doing. The Lord sees what you are doing and knows your heart. Um, and that's the, that's the most important thing. If you are thirsty and you realize you're just not being given me, but you're trying to study and understand and read his word and trying to pray and trying to get a revelation and trying to hear from him, you know, it's like God sees your hunger. He sees your desire, and he will send the right people in your pathway to help you develop, to help you to get to where he needs you to be, to help you get to the next level and to the next step, you know? So it's like that whole scripture on do not, um, do not be wary in well-doing, for real, because you'll be tired. I'm not going to lie. I get tired, but it's to keep pushing, to keep pressing in. Nothing that you ever want is easy. So you, you, you graduate from daycare to elementary to middle school to high school, right? And with each level, the assignments get a bit more difficult. You have to use your brain a bit more. You may need tutoring once you get to high school because you need a little bit more help. You need some, some, some outside resources. You need, you need to be helped even more, right? And then you get to college, and then you're like, whoa, this right here, I've got to write two pages out of 20 pages long. I can't even write down five pages. What do you even talk about? So you don't put in something. The center helps you. You know, they give you ideas. They show you how to, to, to cultivate the paper, to work it, to write it, to to, to develop it, right? So there are people that are sent in to help you. Now you go from going to your bachelor's to your master's, and it's even more difficult because now I've got to forget, forget about it. The word's bigger. I got to use a dictionary. I got to listen to things up. I don't know what you're talking about. These principles and these, um, these theories that you're talking about, too much, right? You go to your master's, and you're your doctor's, and you're like, oh, man, can I write a whole book? The dissertation is too much. Like, you know, and then that thing could get published. It could really be research that can really do to get published and be out there for all business to learn to develop. You see how that cycle of school goes? It's a cycle. When it comes to Jesus Christ, I think it. Okay? People come in, they help you to develop. They send the right people. Call and ask you to send the right people. You send the right people into your life. But we help you develop. No, you don't even need it to help you develop because it's so it's so good for me to see. You got it. You can't even imagine. It sends right people to help you develop, and you go a little bit higher. 
Those people might stay, they might go, who knows, right? And then people with more power will come and help you develop. You might get mothers that come to help you develop, to see you through. You might get people that are just here to burst things out of you, to come burst things out of you. People that will pray for you will come into your life and just be praying in the background and just be your friend to life. You know what I mean? But you don't know that they've been undergirding you for life. People will come, especially as as you progress, people will fall to the side as you progress, and people will come. Okay? Because as soon as you get higher in the world, those people that are not about it, dash right to the side. People that become jealous and let the enemy use them, dash right to the side. But God always sends people to help you develop. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Okay? So it's either him that's helping you directly or he will send people to help you, to mature you. But what do you want? Do you want to go higher? Do you want to develop? Do you do you seek him consistently? I wake up, I have my mind. I give a little prayer. I begin to get ready for work. I'm brushing my teeth. I'm in the sun. I'm I'm praying for somebody or something. You know, I'm on my way to work, and I'm just thanking him for his graces and the time. You know, I get to my job. Thank you for making me safely. I've already put the day before you and put the work day before you. I'm at work. I just took me out. I can think it. I can't. And, you know, during lunchtime, Lord, I thank you for making the first half of the day. Let me get through this, this the next half of this day and get home safely. You know, it, it's consistent conversation. People think all the time that, you know, um, there's different types of prayers, yes, but people think all the time that I need to be Father in the name of Jesus and thank you on today, Lord God, please. He wants to hear from you, yes. You know, like that. Sometimes it can be a spiritual Warfare prayer. It can be something that you need to go into intercession for. Correct. I get it. But conversation is what he's keen looking for you to keep your mind on the things that are above. So how do you do that? You keep in conversation with him. You can work with certain people throughout the day if you had a bit of time with him. And that's fair. You're consistently talking to that person. So they know the updates throughout your day. They know what's going on in your workplace. They know what's happening with you at each and every point through the day. Huh? Why can't we talk to God like that? With reverence and with respect. Why cannot why can we not speak with our father that way? If he is our father, why can't we talk to him that way? The Lord really is looking for his children to come out of this infancy phase and to come into a level of maturity. You know, he wants us to be able to to discern the things that are placed before us. He wants us to be able to prophesy, to, to, to speak in tongues and interpret tongues. He wants us to, to receive the word of knowledge. He wants all these things for us. Do we want it for ourselves? Shut up. Just say, are we operating in in, in the, the, the New Testament commandment of loving our neighbors as we love ourselves? Are we operating in love? These are all things that you begin to search and seek for. It's no longer about self. It's no longer about feeding myself and worrying about me. When it comes to service, these are the things we begin to worry about. How, what are the gifts that you have given me? What's the thing? What are you, what are you calling out of me? Where are you calling me to? How can I help? You know? How can I sacrifice? Okay? And not something else. Are you sacrificing your flesh? By fasting, consecrating, 
denying your flesh things, are you making the sacrifice? Because you would notice the difference. I remember one time, the first time I fast is a 21-day Daniel fast. It wasn't with the church, but I was with a bunch of other churches that would do it at um, in the January season, the New Year season. And I said, you know, I had a relationship that was going around, and I was like, you know what? At the time, I didn't, I didn't fully know what fasting was about, but I knew that people you before time used to fast to get paid, right? So I was like, this is a decision we can fix. I'm going to fast and keep God to fix it. Fasted for 21 days. Daniel fast to be at that. First fast ever. Three measures. Um, I fasted for the 21 days. I lost a whole bunch of weight. And the person began to act right, like, so right that the things that come out their mouth was like it's so wrong. Oh, they ready to get married. They want to have children. I said, wait, 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 come to that. <laughs> I just wanted you to know that relationship. This is like superseding what I thought was going to happen. And then won't you know a year and a half later we broke up? Okay. So I'm just saying. Be careful what you're fasting about, what your, what your intentions are behind your thoughts. But are we making the sacrifice to fast, to pray, to spend the time in the world, to deny ourselves, to deny ourselves, ourselves, our flesh? Are we doing that? I know this is supposed to be prayer, but... This thing was in my spirit from this morning when I was up. You know, I, I still need to set my clock because I woke up and I was like, oh, my gosh, it's 5.58. And then I looked at my phone and I said, it's 4.58. And I said, oh, man. <laughs> but this thing has been in my spirit since this morning. Are we willing to go higher in God? Are we wanting to seek more? Are we wanting to fulfill that purpose for our lives? Or is it our agenda? If it's our agenda, you ain't going to make it very far. Let's just have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you on this morning for giving us the word from your mouth, Lord God. We thank you that it may resonate in our spirit, Lord, that the power the anointing from you shall fall upon each and every one of us, Lord God. We thank you that you are opening wounds right now, Lord God, to birth the gifts that you have put within them, oh God, to service your people, to service your kingdom. Father, we thank you right now that you are mending hearts and giving people hearts of flesh, oh God, that they may love others like you have loved us, oh God, that we may go forth and share in that good love. We thank you this morning, oh, God, that you are calling us higher in you, oh, God. That means you are ready for your people, oh, God, your people to go forward, to go out and do what you have called them to do. Father, we thank you that you have already ordained our steps. You have already guided the path. You have already marked out what it is and where it is we shall go. Father, help us to prepare in this time and in this season. Show us what it is that we need to do to prepare. Lord God, to get to the next step, to the next level. Oh God, to go higher in you and not for our flesh to be glorified, but for you to be glorified and your people to be edified. We thank you on this morning. Father, may you go forth on this line, oh God, and touch each and every person under the sound of my voice. Lord God, that they may they may absorb this word and sit and speak with you, oh God, to hear from you and hear what it is and where it is they shall go. Father, no longer do we want to crawl, be fed, oh God, be wiped and be taken care of. Let us want to go up levels in you, oh God, levels in your relationship, Lord God. 
levels, dimension, dimensions, oh God, in you. Let us go up. Let us want and yearn and thirst and hunger to go up in you. Father, that we may not go up for fame, fashion, or glory, but we may go up so that we may be more anointed, more powerful, more authority to go forth and do the things of your kingdom. We thank you today, Jesus, for the word. We thank you, Lord God, that as we separate from this line, Father, that your presence may be upon each and every one of us, that your blood may cover us and watch over us today, Lord. Set a hedge of protection around us, O oh God, and around our purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me on the Lord's Prayer. Join me next week, Saturday, same time, same place, 6 a.m. See you then.